UDP hole punching is a method used to make clients communicate with each other and establish peer-to-peer connection that runs on UDP when both clients apply net in their system. Okay, that was a lot of words that my IP is unfamiliar, so let's go over them and understand UDP hole punching as a whole afterwards. We use peer-to-peer to establish a direct connection between two peers, which you also call clients. These clients will have no or minimum support from a server. UDP is a transport protocol that allows packets to be fast. It is considered to be unreliable as packets are not guaranteed to arrive to their destination. NAT is used in routers to translate IP addresses among the devices. The NAT receives a public IP address and every device within the NAT will receive their own private IP address. NAT is also used as a barrier within the system to avoid unwanted traffic. Client A within a NAT can connect to client B without NAT, but B cannot reach A because of the NAT. B will have to request to the rendezvous server S for permission from A by relaying a connection request on a reserve connection, making A allowing B to connect back. Now UDP hole punching can be illustrated as the different terminologies has been explained. We assume that we have a rendezvous server S, client A and client B. The NAT will be illustrated afterwards. A would like to create a connection with B. They ask S for B's information. S will inform A with the information of B, meaning the public and the private IP addresses and port numbers. At the same time, S will inform B about A's information along with the connection request from A. A and B now know the endpoints and has the possibility of sending data to each other. A will send UDP packets to B, meaning A will send packets to both the private and the public IP address of B. When one of the receiving IP addresses receives the packets, they will send a response to A. A will thereby no longer send packets to the slower or non-responding endpoint as a faster connection is already established. A and B now have an ongoing peer-to-peer -peer connection. If there is just one NAT with both clients within the NAT, then the process will end up connecting clients directly through their private IP addresses as a connection made privately would be faster than responding through a NAT. If the client have separated NATs, then more information might be needed for a connection to reach the correct client. If client A searches for the private IP address of client B, they might find a client within its own NAT, and thereby not reaching the client they hoped for. In this case, extra information as application-specific names will support the result, for instance. As the clients both have a security barrier through NAT, both clients would have to request access to other clients resulting in clients punching a hole through their own NAT. If client A punches a hole through its own NAT and asks client B for access, the request may be dropped. Client B must have punched a hole through its own NAT as well to accept the request from clients. Multiple layers of NAT are more complicated, where the process of UDP hole punching may include extra steps of NAT's hairpin translation to clear the multiple layers of security barriers that NAT provides. Now that we understand the communication between clients, we may wonder what the purpose this mechanic has. We use UDP hole punching's peer-to-peer -peer connection on a daily basis through telephony and video applications like Skype and online gaming, where these connections may be allowed to have packet loss, but has a possibility to perform live fast.